in the name of the Lord, their safety. Wow. The reason why we proclaim the name is because we know within the name there is safety. Yes. Outside of the name, it's, it's, it's all uncertainty. But you have a sure promise, a promise from God that is certain that if you stay under that covering of his name, you will get to your destination. And what he showed you is not just a, an image. It's a hope yes. for you. An expected end. That's what hope is. Hope is you are expecting the best of every situation. And God wanted you to know that this morning. Expect the best of every situation. That's what hope is. We're going to go ahead and release our children and get into the word of God. And as they go, we just bless them. We bless them to hear the word of the Lord, to be strengthened by the Lord, to be encouraged and be empowered. These children are anointed. Yes, they are. We have some anointed yes, children oh, in this they ministry. They're just yes, so they amazing. They, they are being taught the oracles of God. Yes. You know how amazing that is for children to be taught the oracles of God, the word of the Lord, the things of the Lord. They're being taught prophetically too. We don't just teach them just the Bible stories. Those are good because those are relevant for their time as well. But we teach them how to activate their spiritual senses so they can see God. So yes. they can understand the assignment of angels and know that there's yes. angels with them. We teach them how to move in the things of God. How to taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. Their spiritual senses are activated. Because we're raising up a generation of Joshua's that will come, on, come and possess yes. a new promise. Yes. Come on. Yes. 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 What you don't apprehend in your lifetime, I'm decreeing over your children. Yes. That they will apprehend yes. in Amen. their lifetime. Amen. Because they've been taught the things of God yes. and how to apprehend those things. And they've been taught this, that they are powerful. Come on. Amen. There is no such thing as a baby Holy Spirit. Come on now. The Holy Come Spirit now. is the Holy Spirit, whether in a two-year-old or a 40-year-old, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead will arise in them and quicken them. And these children are, are being taught to prophesy. Yes. yes. I'm going to tell you this and then we're going to get into our teaching. Because today is Pentecost. Yes. Today is a special day. Yes. Today is a day that's been marked by God. God has special days on his calendar. And today is a special day. It's the day that we celebrate what happened in the upper room when the Spirit of God was poured out. When the Spirit of God was poured out, everything changed for the disciples and the apostles. Everything changed. That's why we're so zealous to help people understand what the spirit of God being poured out in their life means and how it empowers them to do unusual things. Nobody want to be the same old, same old, same old year after year after year. All of us pursue change. All of us pursue greatness. All of us, I, I pray you're one of those people that are pursuing the best for your life. You can, you can pursue it, but if you don't have the power to grab it, you'll never get it. And God gave us a power that is certain to appoint us, anoint us, and give us the things we need. Amen? Amen. 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 Can I get some more? <coughs> so, I want to tell you guys this. Thank you. Oh, the devil is a liar. Yes, he is. I'll preach a loud voice. I preach a loud voice. Because it's in me. Come on. Because it's in me. And what's in you will come out of you. No matter what. The enemy's trying to come right now for my voice. I was just telling you're a lie, devil. You're a liar. The word will go forth. I'm going to tell you this testimony. Because testimonies affirm God's goodness, His purpose. And it shows us manifestation. Yes. Yeah. Like we have to see. Don't you want to see some signs? Yes. Yes. You don't want to just read about this stuff that the apostles did and then never ever see it in your life. That God wouldn't be real to you. This would just be good story. You want to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yes. <coughs> the devil's coming. But I'm going to keep going. Come on, Sam. Thank you, Lord. So I was, uh, years ago, I went to a place called the International House of Prayer. It's a 24-hour prayer house. And when I say prayer house, I'm in 24-7. They never stop praying 
they have 24 hour worship. Mm -hmm. Seven days a week, yeah. the worship never stops. One team leaves the platform, the other team is already playing while they're transitioning. The transition, yeah. even in the transition, every two hours they have a new worship team. Mm -hmm. And even in the transition, the worship don't stop. Mm -hmm. All right. So when you have a place like that, that where prayer is constant, it creates an abode yeah. of God's yeah. presence. Like yeah. It's a thick yeah. cloud in there, so mm -hmm. thick that when you walk into that atmosphere, you can't even stand up. Some friends and I, we, we took a trip there, a girl's trip, a road trip, and we get there and we walk in and we literally got knocked out in the presence light. We walked in the door and it was so thick that I was trying to find a seat, but I couldn't because the presence of the Lord was heavy. The kabod of God is called the kabod of God. The kabod is his weighty presence. It's what we see happening in the throne room that Isaiah saw in Isaiah chapter 6. And in 1 Kings chapter 6, the priest couldn't stand to minister yes. because the presence of God got so thick, it literally caused him to fall on the face. Wow. That's what happened to us. So we walk into this place, <coughs> and we see the, the presence of God. You can see the cloud of his glory. And we all ended up face down for hours praying. When I came to, I realized that the kabod of God is so heavy that it just, when it falls upon human flesh, it'll like cause it to just melt. Mm -hmm. While we were at that place, the International House of Prayer, I went and I got a prophecy. Now, I was a little leery back then. I thought, ah, oh, these people, how are they gonna tell me something? And my friends was like, no, let's get a prophecy. They have prophetic rooms and private prayer rooms that you can go into. So I got in line and I went into this prayer room. When I got in there, there was a little boy, probably around 10, there was an older gentleman, maybe you know, around 56 or so, and then there was a young girl that's probably in her 30s. So you got somebody around 10, you might have been 10, or in late 50s, 30s. And we walk in and there's three seats, they're sitting down, and they have you to sit down. So I sit down and two other people are with me that I don't know because I didn't want to go in with my friends. We all decided, no, we're not gonna go in together. And as we're sitting there, they, they pick up a recorder and they start recording the prophecy for you. So they're prophesying to the two people on the side of me and I'm thinking, okay. And then the little boy picked up my recorder and he says, Kim, we had our name tags, Kim. I hear the Lord saying, sing, O daughter of Zion, and shout, for great is the Holy One in the midst of thee. Wow. What this little boy in Kansas City didn't know was the name of my ministry was the Daughters of Zion. We had a Bible study in my house called the Daughters of Zion. This little boy didn't know it. What the little boy didn't know is that Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 14 was our foundational scripture. Sing, O Daughter of Zion, and rejoice for great as the Holy One in the midst of That little boy did not know me. He was 10 years old prophesying with dead on accuracy. He started telling that he couldn't possibly know because he didn't know any of us. Right. And what that did was I just, I literally melted in my seat. I fell mm. apart because I knew that that was God talking to me. And to talk to me through a 10-year-old or possibly an 8-year-old, I ever think, a little kid, was just mind-blowing. What that showed me, when I got back home, my, my thermometer went up. You know, the spiritual yeah. thermometer, yeah. sometimes it's like here and sometimes it's up here. Mine went up, it shot up because I thought if God will work through a 10 year old, what will he do for me and, and then I was in my 40s. Yeah. Yes. So what I learned from that experience is don't deny children the opportunity to be filled with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit, when it fills them up, it's just like you and I, it gives them prophetic insight and now they can start to decree what they see beyond the natural realm.
Don't go, don't go any further than what I sent you. You stay right there until you be endowed with power. They didn't even know how that was going to look. They just knew that something was going to happen. Lord, they had walked with the Lord. The Lord had trained them. And they had walked with the Lord and they were afraid. 
and they were hiding out because they knew the same people that had killed Jesus right. wanted them to. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's like when the enemy take one of your family members out there, he say, and you next. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, you're thinking about all of that stuff, having a heart attack, or, you know, having an aneurysm, having cancer, all of that stuff. You next, that's the devil trying to threaten you. And then if you allow that stuff to just settle in your head, you'll think about it, think about it, think about it, think about it. But what the Holy Spirit does is come and eradicate that and speak truth. Yeah. And tell you who's your God. Come on. Not only your God, but your Father. Yes. So let's go to the book of Acts. Because we're going to see the transformation of the disciples by the explosive power of the Holy Spirit. If you don't get anything else in your lifetime, get filled with the Holy Ghost. If you don't get if you don't get anything else in your life. If you die struggling, and that's not God's promise for you, but if you don't go after the promises of God for wealth and riches and store it for your, you and your children, if you don't get nothing else as you're walking with God, get the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Yes. You may, you just tell God, I want that thing. Because it is not that hard to have. It's just people, we're always in our head as human beings. We're thinkers. And God gave us a brain to think. He wants us to utilize our natural faculties to uh, as well, but he doesn't want our natural mind to supersede what the spirit says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the natural mind cannot understand the things of God. The natural mind knows how to go to work. The natural mind knows how to get a paycheck. But the natural mind don't know how to heal. That's why the natural mind, when something happens, the natural mind says, we gotta go to the doctor. But the spirit knows how to do these things because the spirit is, is as God is. So the spirit will supersede something that seems natural to do. The Holy Spirit will say, no, 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 let's not do that. Let's fast. Come on. Yeah. Before we go to the doctor, let's fast. Come on. And then the, the, the Holy Spirit will tell you something like, you tell your spirit, because he's not talking to your natural mind. He will tell your spirit, let's fast and pray for 21 days. And your, and your natural mind will be like, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Lord called me out of fast and I'm starting tomorrow for 10 days. And my natural mind was like, we can't do that. I, I got to go to work. I got to have some food. That's the natural mind. Mm-hmm. The spirit's like, yeah, let's go for it. Excited yes. Yes. to please the Lord. Yes. That's why the Bible says they that are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. Yes. You can tell if you're a son or a daughter because the spirit of the Lord leads you and yes. you follow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. So here's what this here's what happened. And and Acts chapter one. Here's what happened. And then you'll see what the Lord has taken the disciples and the apostles. Acts chapter one. Starting at verse four. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the Father. See that? The promise of the Father? That's what the Holy Spirit is. God promised to fill you with the fullness of himself. But highlight that in your Bible. Like, uh, if you're in your iPad, mark that piece, because that's important. That's a promise. And all the promises of God is yes and amen. Which, this is Jesus talking, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. He was saying, this thing isn't going to delay. It's not going to tarry for long. You're going to get this thing because you need this thing in order to do the things that you've been commissioned to do. Verse 6. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. Now, that's not God saying, I don't want you to know times and seasons for your life. He's just saying there are some things that only the Father knows. In Deuteronomy 29, 29, it says the secret things belong to the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong to us and our children. So there are things that God reveals that belong to not only you, but your children and your children's children. So he's not saying you can't know what the Father is doing. He's just saying there's some things that the Father has not released yet and you don't need to know. What you need to know is the next verse. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come up on you. 
and you shall be witnesses to me, not, not to yourself, not to just the church. What you're going to be witnesses to is of the things that Jesus has done, yeah. will do, and is doing. Yeah. So this is a witness to the power of Jesus in our lives. He said, you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And then these apostles and disciples, they watched him ascend up into heaven. He told them what's going to happen to them. He said, you don't need to worry about things that, that the Father has in his control. What you need to focus on is being filled with the power to be able to do something supernaturally. And let's go to chapter 2 now. Starting at verse 1. Flip your page. He told them what was going to happen, right? Yes. Acts 1. Mm -hmm. What did he do? Yes. Told them what, was gonna what did he do? He told them what was going to happen. What did he do? He told them what was going to happen. I want everybody to say it. What did he do? He told them what was going to happen. Exactly. That means he told me. Told me, told me what was going to happen. He told me what was going to happen. What was going to happen. Yeah, because even though he was talking to that group at that time, this word is still pertinent for our time. Yeah. So Amen. he's telling us Amen. what's going to happen. He Amen. says you're going to receive power. Yes. Yes. Ah. Now, Come on. chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, I highlight that in your Bible. Fully. Fully. Right. Fully. It didn't come uh, uh, just in piecemeal. It didn't come and, you know, here and here. Or maybe here. It fully came. Mm. Let me give you an image of that. Imagine your house right now and the light only on in the bathroom. Mm. Yeah. It, and this is at 10 o'clock at night. The light in the bathroom is on. But all the other lights are off your house would be really dark, right? Yes. right? And you wanted to go in the kitchen and make you a sandwich, but the light in the bathroom is on. How much would that serve you in you being able to get what you needed? No, no. None at all. Yeah, exactly. So you go in the kitchen and turn on the light, and now you are able to prepare yourself some food. Mm -hmm. Right. But the light in your bedroom is still not on. Mm. Come on. How mm. would you be, now you gotta walk in the dark to try and find your way to your bedroom to get what you need out of your bedroom. Right. See, when the day of Pentecost came, all the lights in the house came on. Right. Yes. Come on, that's good. All the lights in the house that's came on. Good. So now I can move freely because I'm able to see where I'm going. You are free to move about. You are free, yeah. And the lights, here it is. The lights in the house. Somebody touch yourself. The house. It fully, it fully came. And they were all with one accord in one place. The power of unity sets the atmosphere for miracles. Can I say it again? Yes. The power of unity set the atmosphere for miracles. The power of unity. If you're going to stay together, you got to be in agreement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to agree because if there's any disagreement, there will not be any powerful movements. There will not be any accomplishments. The reason why Pastor Zach and I are so successful in our lives yeah. is because we agree. And even when we disagree, we're not disagreeable. Right. Yeah. So we don't always agree on every little thing, but we're not disagreeable, so we agree. Yeah. I disagree that, you know, I think that could be a little bit more, but oh well. So we agree, and the power of agreement allows you to have accomplishments. Now you're able to fulfill the yeah, will of God. Right. Now you're able to walk with somebody else and accomplish greater things, because the Bible says, where two or three are gathered in my yeah, name, there are am in the midst. You've got to be gathered together on one accord. Yeah. You can't have somebody naysaying, talking bad, disagreeing, yeah. somebody talking about the pastor. Why you don't sit in the church and talk about the pastor? You didn't Come even on. go to the church where you ain't going to talk about the people, because if you're not in agreement, Whatever they're getting, you won't get. Right, right, you right, right, be in right. Agreement, the power of agreement. Amos three and three says, "How can two so, walk together yeah, except they agree. they agree?" If you're walking with people and you're not in a unity with them, you're gonna call. If it's not vision, it's division. Right, right, right. There right. you go. Now you divide. Now you can't stay together. Now you can't. Now I can't, you and I can't produce anything because we're divided. And here's what the enemy does: he divides and conquer. That's what he does. He gets you alone by yourself. He gets you in isolation and then annihilation. All right. 
Yeah. That's the yeah. trick. Yeah. Come on. So what God did was he got 120 people together that was in agreement that we gonna get something. Yes. Because he said it. We gonna get it. We don't know when it's gonna happen. They didn't know that it was going to happen 10 days after he ascended, but he had said not many days from now, which meant it's not going to be 80, 100 days from now. He said not many days. I'm just going to get you positioned. What the, what the Lord was doing was positioning them in prayer so that they could experience his glory. Yeah, come on. That's what Pentecost is, the outpouring of the spirit yes. and his glory. Now they come out with the ability to do the things that they was running away from. Mm. <laughs> come on now. What you been running away from? Yeah. That you know, you know by the Spirit now that you'll be able to do it. Because that's what the Spirit said. You can do it. Yes. It says they were all on one accord in one place. And suddenly. Suddenly. When did it happen? Suddenly. How quick? Suddenly. How quick? Suddenly. 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 That quick like that, like that, like that, like that. Yeah. You believe God? If he can do it suddenly here, he can do it suddenly. Ah, yes. There came a sound. It started with sound. Come on. Come on. Started with sound. It started with sound. Come on. First they heard something. Wow. A sound from heaven. If it was a sound from heaven, it wasn't like a normal sound. Right. It didn't sound like what they normally hear. They heard something different. Quickly. Like boom. A sound. It's like when something explosive go off. Boom. It's a sudden sound and everybody looks. Right in the direction of where it is, yeah, uh-huh. to see what it was, yeah. that's what happened. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. He says, a sound from heaven, as a rush, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared upon them divided tongues as a fire, and one set upon each of them and they were all, somebody say all, all filled, filled with, with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. They were all, everybody in the room. And when it says divided tongues, it didn't divide them. It just gave them different dialects. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody was saying robaba shunday and somebody was saying hoppa, hoppa, hoppa. They were all speaking in tongues. They just, the power was so explosive that it caused each one of them to speak differently. Yet they had the same anointing of fire.
People have done miraculous things by the Holy Spirit. Miraculous things by the Holy Spirit. And, and we will do miraculous things by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Here's what, let's finish this up. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them, utterance. gave them utterance. So it wasn't some human thing that they were doing. They wasn't just sitting there repeating after me. I know there are organizations that believe that you can teach people how to speak in tongues. So they'll tell people, say Shaba. And they'll say Shaba, Abba, Abba, Daba, Baba, you know, and they'll just repeat those things. What that is is mimicking. Right. Because the spirit has to give you utterance right. in order to speak. Yes. And when that happens, you that's a sign that you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. Right. You've been filled with the Holy Spirit. That's a sign that now you have something that is dynamite. There was a guy, a, 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 a scientist, that's a name, Albert Noble. Albert Noble was a brilliant man. His father was a scientist, and they lived in Europe. And Albert Noble created this explosive powder that he laced with nitroglycerin. He created this power and, and it could blow up anything. He tested it out, it could blow up anything. It could blow up mines and they throw it on a mountain, the whole mountain would blow up. And Albert Noble didn't have a name for it. So he asked one of his friends, a Greek scholar, he said, listen, I got this explosive power that I've created, and it can blow up anything. And government just started buying it all over the world. He became an instant millionaire by creating this, this power. And he said to his Greek friend, he said, I haven't given it a name yet. I just, I don't know what to call it. It's so, it's so powerful. It's so explosive. I don't know what to call it. And the Greek scholar said, uh, well, in Greek, we would call it doodless. Mm -hmm. Come on. We would call it doodless. When Jesus told the disciples, wait and you will be filled with power, what he was saying was, wait and you will be filled with dunamis. Because it's right. the same word as explosion. Right. So Albert, no Albert Noble called his, his invention dynamite. Right. He created dynamite. And dynamite is so powerful that if you throw it up against one of these big buildings on the strip, it'll knock it down. As a matter of fact, when they want to tear down an old building to erect a new one, what they use is the same dynamite they use to blow up a building and you spiritually is that same kind of thing. It's a dynamite. He said, I, he said you shall receive dynamite power, dunamis power, the power to be able to do unnatural things. He said, so wait for it. Don't leave without this dynamite because this explosion that's on the inside of you will blow up everything that tries to hold you. what you've given me to do. Help me to accomplish my goals. He, that, Paul says, I pray like that. He said, but I also pray in the spirit. And the reason why I pray in the spirit because there are some things that the devil don't need to know. So he sees me get it. So he said, I pray in the spirit. So when people are praying in the spirit, there, there's a couple of things that's happening. One, they're praying to build themselves up. Jude 1.20 says, build yourself up in your most holy faith. 
praying in the Holy Spirit. That's why after you come out of that time of praying in the Holy Spirit, you feel so charged up. Yeah. It's when you're in that place of praying in the Holy Spirit that downloads start to come. Yeah. That's when I get my best messages when I'm just going about Sunday. And you can do it anywhere because the Spirit is functioning you to do it. I'm washing dishes all about Sunday, okay? I'm cleaning the bathroom one night a quarter of my shot. I'm outside in the garage. I, 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 I pray in the Spirit when the Holy Spirit unction me because there's something he want to blow up. to blow up. Because see, in order to get the diamond, you got to blow up the mine. Yeah. 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 So your blessing is covered by dirt. And you need some di- you need some dynamite to get your you've been empowered with the same power. See, these are the feasts of the Lord. See, And, and one more thing, and then Pastor Zach, uh, please come. Um, one more thing. It was during this time of Pentecost that the harvest, it was the season of the harvest. Mm-hmm. It was harvest time. So they would have festivals, and one of the festivals was to celebrate the harvest. When the harvest came, Pentecost came. Mm. When the harvest came. Come on now. During the time of the harvest, of abundance, that's what the harvest is. Yeah. Bringing the crops in, yes. and they're ha- they have a celebration because you sow seed. Why shouldn't you reap a harvest? Right. Right. Come on. Right. Yeah. So this time the harvest came even quicker because of the suddenly of the spirit. Right. Mm. Right. It was during the harvest time. What is God saying to us right now in this day? If today is Pentecost, then we must be in a harvest time. time. Come on! If today is Pentecost, then we must be in a harvest time. Uh-huh. 
You, we are being baptized today with the power of the Holy Spirit in our life today. And without that power, we can't do a whole lot of people, God. Remember, without that power, the, the, the disciples can do much. They was weak. They were scary. Right. Verse 4 and, and, and in the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 33 says this right here. He said they was endured. No, he said they had mega grace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had mega power. Yeah. Yeah. Now they didn't have any of that without the Holy Spirit. Right, right. They walked with Jesus for three and a half years, but yet they had no power. Right. Ooh. They had no power until he left. Remember, he said in John 4, John 14, about 16 to 31, he said this right here, I must go. Mm -hmm. yeah. I must go yeah. in order for the purpose of God, the yeah. Father, come to you. Yeah. See, he knew what they was going to endure. Yeah. Yeah. So he tells us today, I know people, God. I know my kids. Yeah. What are you going to endure? Uh -huh. I know what you're going through. But you need the power to make it. Yeah. You need the power of the Holy Spirit yeah. to walk this thing out. Do your struggles, do your pain, do your heartache, yeah. do your difficulties in life, do yeah. your do your downs, do your ups, all of it. You we need the power here of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Chapter one led us to chapter two. Come on, wow. what, what Jesus he said, I, I, I gotta prepare you first. So you come into the house, you're being prepared yeah. for today. He said, I'm preparing you to, to go to chapter 2 on, to receive on. something. <laughs> but it's all started back in the beginning. Yeah. Come on now. In Genesis, right about, no, in Exodus, right about verse chapter 11. And, and God said this to Moses. Moses, I need you to send one more plague. Y'all, okay, y'all believe. Let's go down. <laughs> chapter 11, Exodus. Quickly, come on. Chapter 11, Exodus. See, God said, God told Moses, you my boy. I, I, I got to send one more plague here. Yeah. One more plague to take, take these guys out. Uh -huh. Because they are very stubborn. Uh -oh. Come on. Your demons, your enemy is very stubborn. Yeah. And they don't want to move. Oh, they don't want to move. They, 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 they will stay until some power comes. Come on now. Okay. Uh -huh. They will stay until you speak some power to them. They'll hang around and that flies in that. And you'll be swinging all up this hill, but they will not go nowhere. They will not move until you speak to the enemy. I'm ready. Until you speak to empower. Yeah. Only power, only do them with power, only do them make power is going to move your enemy away. And God said to David with Pentecost, I gave you a problem. But first, let's start back here. Round about verse 11, chapter. Verse 1. Let me just read quickly for you. Are you there? Yes. yes. Praise God. And the Lord said to Moses, I will bring one more plague. See, I told you I wasn't telling the story. It wasn't. I will wasn't. bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt. Afterward, he will let you go from here. He said, I'm going to bring one more plague. And what he brought was death to the firstborn of Egypt. And when he brought that plague to Pharaoh, he said, okay. I can't compete against this God. Uh -huh. He is too powerful for me. Uh -huh. yeah. and, my, and, and my little statues of God that I have. Uh -huh. My little idols that I have. Yeah. Who can't talk. Who can't move. Who can't walk. Uh -huh. Who can't see. Who can't hear. Uh -huh. But your God. Your God can walk. Yeah. He can speak. Yes. He can see. Yeah. He can hear. Yeah. He can hold. Yeah. He can touch. Uh -huh. And your God give you promises. Come on. Yeah. There you go. That came to fruition. Uh -huh. Come on. So you got that, right? Yeah. So back back to the book of Acts now. Back to the book of Acts. Act one. Back to the book here. This whole book of Acts. This whole book of Acts. Guess what? It's about the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Without the Holy Spirit, there will be no book of Acts. Mm -hmm. Come on. Right. Come the book of Acts is the Holy Spirit. Come on. From the beginning to the end. Right. Yeah. So, let me the that for you. From the beginning to chapter 28. Right, right. That's it. Amen. Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. Amen. Okay, you didn't catch that. Yeah, yeah. How many chapters in the book of Acts? 28. 28. 28. So, that means that book is still going on. Right. Yeah. 
We are still continuing in the book of Acts. We are today the book of Acts. We don't want what they're doing much power. Because on the day of Pentecost, the power came. And he gave us more power and more power. And they spoke with tongues. It says that fire came on, on, yeah. on the tongue, right? And they spoke with different languages and a different tongue. But it gave them power. It gave them grace. It gave them something they didn't have before. Yeah. And what God did, he showed me this here. He said, back in Genesis chapter 11, called it the, the, the Tower of Babel, there was only one, one language it said. That was one language. And the people were so smart, God said, they were trying to build a tower to heaven. Mm -hmm. And God said, let me come down. Mm -hmm. And let me confuse them a little bit. Uh -huh. let, me get, let me give them different languages. Oh, no. Are you getting this? Yes. Yes. Let me give them different languages. Mm -hmm. So you see about 1,500 years later, on the day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit came with power, mm -hmm. and they began to speak in different, different languages. languages. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. Come on. And everybody that was outside of the upper room heard their own language ah, right, right. Right. That's that was being spoken. Right. And they was amazed. Mm -hmm. How could these people, the urban people they said about them, mm -hmm. speaking in this language? Right. Speaking with such power. Uh -huh. How how is this to be? How is this? The wind of God came hey, as an explosion. Yeah. As an upper room. Why? Because there was prayer. They were praying. Come on now. They were praying. Yeah. They didn't just sit back for nothing. They was praying. And then the power, the prophet, the promise finally came and hit them. Yeah. Yeah. Not just the disciples, but there was others in that room. Right. Like the mother of Jesus. Mm -hmm. She also got baptized with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Come on. And, and, and if you read Acts, that thing continues to happen. Yeah. Everybody that encountered the disciples mm -hmm. were endured with power. Yeah. They got baptized and then they got the power. Uh -huh. They got baptized mm -hmm. and then they got the power. You see, that was two baptisms here. Uh. That was a baptism of the Spirit and a baptism of the Word. Right. Come on. Come on. Come on, Come on somebody. Talk to yeah. this one. Yeah. Two baptisms. See, if you go back to Exodus, around about chapter 19, when Moses went up the mountain to Mount Sinai, mm -hmm. God gave him a tablet of the law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? He yeah. gave him a tablet, and then he said, I'm going to write this upon yeah. your hearts. Uh -huh. yeah. The yeah. law upon your heart. Uh -huh. But then he went over here later, and, and, and mm -hmm. at chapter 2, he said, now, I'm going to put my spirit in you. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not going to write upon your heart. I'm going to put myself inside you. Uh -huh. And walk with you. Come on. Now you will endure power yeah. and strength. No longer the law. <coughs> the law. Jesus came there. No longer the law. The Spirit came and said, I'm going to walk with you now. Come you see, on. in Bethlehem, God was with us. In mm -hmm. Chapel, God was for us. Yes. In Pentecost, God was yes. in yes. us. Come on. Yes. And, and, and Calvary, no, in Bethlehem, God was in us. No, for, with us. Uh -huh. And Bethlehem, in uh, Calvary, God was for us. In mm -hmm. Pentecost today, mm -hmm. God is in us. Amen. So on, that's God good. is in us, you have the power. Yes. That's good. I said it last Sunday, you have the power. Yes. Yes. You have the Holy Spirit of God inside you, yes. walking with you. Yes. He never leaves. That's why Jesus said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. He said, he said that. He told it over in, 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 in John chapter 16, around about verse 12. He said, I can't tell you everything because right now you can't receive everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you can't receive it. Not until you get endured with power. Mm -hmm. Not until the Holy Spirit come. Yeah. So when the Holy Spirit came, it came like an explosion. Yes, yes, yes. 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 What we don't know, see, the same thing happened to, 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 to Jesus back in, in Matthew chapter 3 when he got baptized. Mm -hmm. When he got baptized and came out of one, that was an explosion. Mm -hmm. But we don't see that. Mm -hmm. The Bible said, oh, the heavens opened up. Yeah. The same day, the same thing happened today. The heavens opened up. Come on. The tongue, the fire of God came down like a mighty rusty wind. Mm -hmm. And Jesus told him, look at this, was this. He said, the wind blows when no one knows. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the wind was just blowing. Yes, God. The wind of God. And no one knew. Resurrection wind was coming. Right, mm -hmm. right. 
Sometimes your problems come from a place you don't know where it's coming from. Yeah. And sometimes it, it catches you off guard and it's knocked you and knocked you back. That's how the devil come. He can catch you off guard. He catch you at, that, at your time that you're weak, that you're not strong, and you can't defend yourself. Come on. And he throw punches when you when you got no defense. And he keep going and going and going until, until he can knock you out. But not today, baby. Not today. Today, you know yourself that you have power. Come on. Yes. It is so powerful. This is what this is what David said over in, in Psalm 51. He said, God, do not take my Holy Spirit from me. Your Holy Spirit. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Now, the Bible said David was a man of God's own heart. Now, I can remember this probably some years ago. My wife told me that God said that about me. I said, well, God, if I'm a man of your own heart, then speak to my wife and listen to me sometimes. <laughs> you know, if I got that power, you know, I'm your man, let her know what's going on. Listen to me sometimes. She got the power. Oh man, there. Come on, give me some, give me some clap, guys. I'm on the lake and I'm okay. Come on, man. I'll see you back there, baby. See? So David said that. I, I need the Holy Spirit, God. Don't take it away from me. I understand that's power. I mean, but what? I, I need that strength. I need your grace. Yeah. I, I need I need the Holy Spirit in my life mm -hmm. to help me out. Yeah. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot understand this Bible. Right, right, right. right. It's right. We cannot understand it. Look, the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us. Right. And that day, that day on the day of Pentecost, a celebration, a celebration, they said. 3,000 people were saved. Wow. 3,000. Oh, yep. Peter preached and 3,000 were saved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 3,000. Mm -hmm. Today. Today, people of God, Amen. you hear the powerful word already. Yes. You hear the powerful wow. word already. Amen. My prayer for you this morning is that today, understand what today is. Yeah. Yes. Understand, understand that you still have, you have that power today yourself. Yeah. Yes. You have it in you. It wasn't just for the apostles back then. Right. See, I, I, I'm in school right now, and sometimes some, some of the theologians tell me that is not talking about us today. This power is not for us. Well, if, it's, if it wasn't for us, then why is it in the Bible? Right. Amen. Right. 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 As the apostles just said, I mean, why is it in the Bible? Mm -hmm. Because God knows we needed power. Right. He knows we're going to yeah. need some strength to deal with the attack we have in our life today. Yes. 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 So my prayer for you today is you get this word and, 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 and pray that the Holy Spirit mm. will give you illumination of what God wants in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Give you direction. Mm -hmm. Lead you and guide you. Listen to that voice. Mm -hmm. Listen, it's one voice. Mm -hmm. You got three voices. You got more than three voices. But you got your voice, the voice of the enemy, and then you got the voice of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said this right here about John, right about chapter 10. He said, my sheep know my voice. Mm -hmm. My sheep knows my voice. Yeah. So listen to that voice that's speaking. For that voice is going to tell you to do the right thing. Yes. That voice is going to lead you in a path of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Come on. For his name's sake. Yes. See, that, that, that voice is going to tell you what to do. Yes. That's right in the eyes of God, right. not in the eyes of yourself or the enemy. Right. Praise God. Praise yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. That's, that's a good word, Pastor Zach. Good word. We we want to solidify in your soul and in your spirit the anointing that is freely given to you. There's two words that I highlighted as Pastor Zach was preaching because he pointed them out. The first word was baptized. Acts 1, verse 5. Baptized. Baptized means to be totally submerged in. When we have a baptism, we totally submerge you from head to toe in water. We take you all the way down, and, and I try to take them deep. Yep. You know, it, I don't make it a half of a second. Right, right. I hold you in the water a little bit, wait till the spirits say, pull them up. Some people are like, oh, they come up. <laughs> they come up ready. John baptized with repentance. He prepared the people for the baptism of the Holy Spirit because you can't have it if you're not living in unforgiveness 
you're living in anger. The Holy Spirit is not just going to come and dwell in a, in a temple that is have not had preparation. Jesus, three years on the earth, he was preparing those disciples to receive this power. If you give a child car keys, they will tear up the car because they're not prepared to drive. Yeah. If God gives you the keys and you're not prepared to use them, you you wreck your life. If he gave you that power and you don't know how to use that power, you, you would just you would be cursing people. In the name of Jesus, be dead, then they can fall out. Mm -hmm. We see that kind of power. Ananias and Sapphira lied to the Holy Spirit right. and it took them out. Just like that, they dropped dead. This Holy Spirit ain't nothing to play with. Mm -hmm. You've got to prepare your heart for it. Yeah. So that baptism is, it's going to come from your, your head all the way to your toes. Your toenails will feel it. Because it's power. You'll feel stronger and capable. Confident. That's what the Holy Spirit brings. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, God wants you to be submerged, completely covered, overshadowed in it. And the other word is receive. Jesus said, you shall receive power. Receiving is symbolic of the giver. He gives you a gift. You don't have to beg for it. You don't have to, God, I want it. Please, please, please. I, I, I was doing that so much I couldn't get it. Before, I just come to the altar, beg God. Give me that Holy Ghost. What I didn't know was he was preparing my heart to receive it. Because once it comes, you, you have a responsibility then to utilize it. The Bible says where much is given, much is expected. You have a responsibility now to utilize that. And that's why Jude said, praying in the Holy Ghost, build yourself up. How am I going to build myself up? I'm going to pray in the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read the word. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to walk in agreement with those God has called me to be in agreement with. And as you do that, what happens is you build yourself up. Now the Holy Spirit gets more and more and more. You become, you expand in the Spirit. Yeah. It's like you build yourself up. Pray in the Holy Spirit. First thing I want you to do as you rise, come and rise with us. It's just receive. Now if there's something you need to get right in your heart, we want to first start there. Because we want you to have all that God says is yours. And the Holy Spirit is yours. It is the power of God unto righteousness. Here's what the Spirit will do for you. It will teach you how to witness. He said, you'll be my witness. You'll testify to me. The Holy Spirit will give you the power to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. The Holy Spirit is so powerful. It will, uh, the Lord had me write this stuff out. It will empower you with boldness. The disciples, they were so bold after they left that place. Going from fear to faith to feeling to boldly going out proclaiming. One sermon was so bold that 3,000 people came to the Lord that day. From one sermon. 3,000 unsaved people. See, we want to go save the saved. But what we've got to do is go save the sick. We've got to go to hospitals, institutions, jails where people are messed up. They don't go to those places because they're okay. Now, those are places you can find messed up people. Maybe they have lost their faith or just lost their way. And we want to go preach to them. And the only way to really be able to witness to somebody is to have the boldness of faith to do it. Oftentimes Christians don't talk to other people because they don't have that boldness. It takes a boldness to go up to a Jehovah Witness. And so let me tell you about the real Jesus. It takes a boldness to go up to a Mormon and, and speak Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, and not the devil's brother. It takes a boldness. You think you got to know everything the Holy Spirit does, and when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, he will teach you all things. And Jesus says this, and he'll bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said. When the Holy Spirit is leading you to be a witness, he's going to lead your mouth to what to say. And we need that. God is sending 800 people. He's adding. He said, I'm adding to the gathering. Mm. And yesterday, Pastor Irma got a word from a total stranger. God is growing your church. Wow. Yeah. And not so we can say we're big, but so that we can say we're powerful. Amen. 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 That's the display of our power. Yes. 
want to first encourage our audience to sow into what God is doing. You that are getting fed from the gathering, we want you to partner with us. And as we sow into you, we want you to sow seed back. The liberal soul is made abundant. We're talking financial seeds. We're going out reaching people all over the city and around the world, and we need your participation. We're looking at buying some great cameras so that we can have a better image and you can see it in its fullness. You're a part of that. And God wants you to sow. You can give by going to the gathering community lv.com. Again, that's the gathering community lv.com. You can also do it by Cash App, God's Girl 702. We appreciate your seed. You can just put it in an envelope and send it here. 3925 North MLK Boulevard, Las Vegas, Nevada. 89032, number 106. Make sure you put that because we don't want you to send your seed to Pizza Hut. <laughs> number 106. We bless you and I pray that the Spirit will overshadow you and overpower you. Pastor Zach and I and this great team. We want you to walk in the fullness of God as we walk in the fullness of God. Have a great Pentecostal day. Celebrate this day. For us that are here,